Welcome, welcome very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program, Kenneth uh, Churchill, and he's got a really very interesting story to tell. He's written a book I'm going to show right here at the outset, and he, uh, it's called American Homeless, and he bills himself as an American homeless uh, advocate. And he's got. He's also he was VP and worked with Indio and in the production and distribution of the Street News, a yes. major publication, yes. and so forth. But I'll, I'll put this up and maybe give him a chance to come in on this if you can. This is the book that he has, and uh, let's see if we can come in on that. I'll give them time for it to come in. But welcome very much, uh, Kenneth. Welcome very much to Conversations. Thank you, Harold. I wonder if maybe you could. They're coming in on your book now, but I wonder if you could share a little bit. Born and raised, where you were born and raised, and we're going to get into this land movement idea that you've been a pioneer of, but uh, share where you were born and raised and let's kick it off that way. Yes, uh, I was born in Queens in 1949. Uh, at the age of three, my parents moved out onto the island and I grew up around Oakdale, out uh -huh. there, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, so I've always been a New Yorker. You've been a New Yorker, yeah, okay. So, okay, so tell me, let's talk about, because I've read your book, it's a brief book, it's very well done, you're also a poet. Yes. You are a poet and everything, and you've worked with India, as we say, on the street news, but uh, have you always been interested in the interest, you're in the interest, you, you are interested in the interests of the homeless within our midst and that kind of thing. Have you had a long-term association of interest or concern with the least among us, as most all the wisdom schools advocate that we do have that kind of a sensitivity, but have you always been involved with that or interested in the in the uh, in advancing the cause of the least advantaged, some of the homeless people among us? And yes, um, um, I was uh, I was just. Uh, Average working guy yeah. in, in the mid seventies. I got yeah. hurt at work, mm -hmm. and I noticed that my uh, you know my my life changed entirely. Yeah, that I could not keep up. That mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I was hopping on one leg because I couldn't walk on the other. And, you know, and mm. I couldn't keep up. And I and I noticed that. You know, when my peers were doing a certain speed and racing yeah. through their day, I, you know, I used to be able to keep up with them. But when I got hurt, I started slowing down. Yeah, okay. And uh, falling behind. Uh -huh. And I started to, uh, my life changed. And, and as it says in American Homeless, some people can't recover their former lives. I was never right. able to. I okay. was never able to. Okay. But without, you know, going so far into that, uh -huh. that's what veered me off from uh, just being a working guy yeah. and to becoming a writer. Uh -huh. But I first entered into... Uh, the arena, so to speak, of of homelessness uh, as a legal advocate. And, uh -huh. uh, I'll have to minimize this, but I, I thought that the federal courts would address the problems of homelessness in this country. Yeah. And took a case to federal court, and, and so I'm believing that uh, it could be corrected there. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I found out that they weren't interested, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at all, and uh, I, I became a writer, and uh, I moved from legal advocacy into author advocacy, uh -huh. which would require going out there and living homeless uh -huh. in order to know what I was writing about. Right, right, right. So I was right. out there uh, on two halves of uh, half a winter, then again on a half a winter, or one entire winter. Uh -huh. Enough to know that when you're out there homeless that your blood will freeze and you will die. Absolutely. Okay? You got a uh, poem I pushed about, it. You, you know? got a poem in here about boots or your pillow and that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, it. so yeah, I mean, how hard scent. it is and, yeah. and the plight of them yeah. because they actually have no place to go. No. Well, the way things are yes. set up and everything. Yes. Yeah. Which, which brings us uh, yeah. closer to uh, talking about land rights for homeless people. Mm -hmm. uh, to put it simply, Mm -hmm. uh, I wish there were more people trying to seek land rights for homeless people uh -huh. than we have today. And through the show, perhaps we'll make contact with Let's try to do that and also that, let them know what that concept means and the importance sure. of it. And, sure. and the context mm -hmm. which makes that an important social We'll, we'll stop by. We'll build a foundation of this. When a, when a woman is homeless, uh -huh. she has lost her right to land. When a man is homeless, uh -huh. he has lost his right to to land. To land. Land. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's not so much that they have lost their right to enter or remain legally in a building. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. They lost their right to land to begin with. So okay. their rights to land were taken from them uh -huh. in Western society, going all the way back to 
just before the Industrial Revolution. The enclosure movement? Well, the enclosure movement yeah. in England. Yeah, yeah right. That's yeah. where, where uh -huh. the homeless we see today in America because initially. Of the, because of the pattern by which land tenure and everything was set the up. The economic system. system. The economic system itself. Yes. was based on that enclosure thing uh, directed against the Irish. Uh, um, major. It, it, it affected the Irish. Yeah. It affected the English as well. The, yeah, the English right. peasant was yeah. forced off the land into the cities to provide cheap labor. Because there used to be a commons that they could repair to. There were commons that could be repaired to in the longer tradition. I, I, I yeah. believe yeah. prior to 1634, all the lands of England were the commons. Uh -huh. Were okay. the commons. Okay, that's interesting. You know? that's interesting. Uh, unless they were seeking uh, the protection of a lord, uh, uh -huh. a warlord or something, then yeah. they would have to obey his well, rules. Well, this is what feudal lords were. They were like uh, warlords. Yeah, and, and yeah. then if a peasant could somehow, you know, get by, he mm. was allowed on, on the common lands. Right, you know? right, right, right. And then, so with the passing of the closure enactments in 1634 in England by the British Arab aristocracy, right. it forced the common people off of the land into the cities. Yeah. So that, that the principle of total enclosement uh -huh. made it all the way to the United States, and the land in the United States was enclosed as soon as the government could get that done. What does that mean, enclosed? Enclosement of the land is, uh, most people have a concept of private property, and I think everybody in the viewing audience can yeah. grab onto that. Uh -huh. Now, but a concept of private property is based upon what I call an American homeless, mm -hmm. class Class A tenancy or Class B tenancy. Uh -huh. Class A tenancy is owning a mortgage, and I think you people believe me now yeah. that you never did own the house, and if you didn't own the house, you didn't own the land under the house either. Uh -huh. So therefore, the land under your house that you thought you owned was in total enclosement, but you didn't realize what it. What does that mean again, enclosement? It means that the land was owned by the banks, and you were renting it from the banks. Well, not even, even if you got your mortgage paid, you couldn't buy it. You get the mortgage paid, they'd have a burning ceremony of the mortgage after yeah, well, it was all maybe, paid off. You know, they claim one-third of the Americans actually do own the land in the building that uh, they bought, uh -huh. that, but the others are, they're renting a mortgage. Well, actually. that's because they had a long-term, it's a long-term investment that has to be paid off. Well, if, if everybody in the audience for a moment yeah, go ahead. could picture a map of the United States. Right, okay, let's right? try. From California on, over to New York, oh, okay. okay? The federal government alone holds in enclosement 650 million acres of land. Oh, say it again, slow. The federal government of okay. the United States alone right. holds an enclosement. An enclosement. In that's enclosement. Right. 650 million acres of land. Wow. How many acres are there in the United States, I wonder? I don't that know. I don't that, know, but you yeah. take the total acreage, mm -hmm. subtract 650 million acres, and you've got your answer, Harold. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. oh. Oh, oh. But that's true also. Now you take the land that the states ha hold in enclosement, state land. Mm -hmm. Now you go into the NVIDIA states, and, and the states are holding land in enclosement. Uh -huh. Now you go to the town of village, and the town of village is holding land in enclosement. Okay. okay. Now you're looking down from the clouds and you're looking at a map of the United States. Yeah. Let's consider all the land that the church is holding in, in close. A lot. Yeah. So the church in more or less uh, unsavory mm -hmm. uh, joined uh, with, the, with the government of the United States mm -hmm. is allowed to hold all the land they want mm -hmm. tax free mm -hmm. and forbid people from being on that land, and the church does. They forbid people from well, being is on that, that land. Is enclosement the same as a title, or you have a title ownership or something no, like that? No, enclosement of the land is, is, is a, a uh, partnership between the government and the church to keep the people off the land. Because Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why. Okay, okay, why? Why does society benefit from enclosement? I know the because founding fathers of the United States were all had huge land tracts, and they would have huge land tracts. That had to be granted to them. The people who wrote the Constitution were landed white men and right. they had built ownership or some sort of enclosement or relationship right. well, to the vast well, okay, expanse those, of an those open continent. later uh uh, evolved into enclosement land, enclosed lands. So at that time they were deeded that. But <coughs> I kind of lost, I lost my thought there. <coughs> Enclosement of the land has one purpose: uh -huh. to force the people on the common lands into the cities to provide cheap labor for industry. Okay, say it again. Enclosement of the land in Western society. See, in Asian society, the peasant was encouraged to stay on the lands until recently, uh -huh. until industrial revolution yeah. took off in China. Now right. they're encouraged to go into the cities to provide cheap labor for the factories, for the industry. Yeah. But in the United, in Western society, Europe and the United States, mm -hmm. since 1634, the people have been forced off the land into the cities to provide cheap labor for industry. That's its purpose. So in other words, if people were allowed to go anywhere they want, 
they might not stand at a drill press for 16 hours in the cities. Now, yeah, would they? for 10 cents right? an hour. For yeah, 10 cents yeah, an hour, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Child labor Okay, was so, yeah, so yeah. the conspiracy between the government and the church to keep the people off the lands uh -huh. has prevailed in this nation, and it has produced the homeless population in this nation. And about the world? Uh, is it different in the world, or we talk about this there nation? Is, there is variation. Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't claim to, I see, because I didn't live in other countries. Right, right, I right, really sure. can't. I'm, I'm an advocate for American homeless. Okay, you know? yeah. And, and I'm saying... Gosh, should they need it? No matter where I go in this country, a homeless person, homeless <laughs> people, have one thing in common. They don't have a home. So, Harold, uh, it's a privilege to be on this show to explain yeah. to people mm -hmm. that I have created in American Homeless, uh -huh. this book, uh -huh. a national system of homeless land reservations. Right, like the, uh, like the Native Americans. Same group. as the Indians. I'm uh -huh. not trying to, go, you know, uh -huh. be the big, uh, you know, like I say, if it works for the, yeah. and boy, do they know how to share common land. Uh -huh. And they would be the people to ask questions. You're you going know, quickly say, no, here and everything right. like that, but I mean, if you have that, the idea of a resurrection, you're talking about having, and, and you make such a point, poetically, beautiful point, that Thank the you. homeless have virtually have nowhere, nowhere to, go. to go. No matter where they go, they're trespassing. Nowhere to go. If they're could, trespassing <laughs> everywhere. They're everywhere moving they on, moving everywhere on, moving on. That's right, that's and, right. And the people were thrown out of Fallujah Park at the Liberty. They had nowhere to go. The, op, the uh, Occupy Wall Street people had nowhere to go. Right. There was nowhere right. to go. Move right. on, move on, right. move yeah. on, that kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. 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 How did we get to such a pretty pass? Um... Well, I, I'd like to talk about that a little more okay. uh, later when we discuss okay. Veblen okay, a little yeah. bit, Thorsten you know, Veblen, and yeah. economics. A yeah, bit, right, right, right. right yeah. But uh, if I could conclude for the people, okay, yeah. they're not going to hear it a lot. So oh, yeah, you're the only privilege. person in the country advocating along the lines that you are. Yes. Yeah, that's Europe really is, I, You know, I, that's I, 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 I don't care much about Europe. I care about my country. Uh, I care about my people not having anything. Yeah. Nothing. Left yeah. out there to die. Banished. Yeah. They dehydrate and die across yeah, right, the South. Right, right, they, right, they're right. taking dead, stiff bodies out of Chicago every winter. Mm -hmm. right. But let me just explain the land, the land model. American Homeless Land Model calls for a homeless land reservation about four soccer fields inside. Wait a minute, a soccer field about the same as a football field? or is Same it thing, same, same thing. All we need is an image there. Oh, you know, right. an okay. image to come to mind, people. You land. Know. Yeah, instead of talking about acres. Four you know. football fields. About yeah. four, about four or five. So okay. be one for each yards, county in yeah. the United States. One for each county in the United States in every state of the United one States. One for and each Nash county yes. in the United States. Close to the county dump or on county dump land even, uh -huh. which would revolve homeless families at no cost to the state, at no cost to the taxpayer, at no cost to the downtown business merchant, and at no cost to the homeless people. You want to have them located somewhere near urban centers well, where there could be casual, the uh, casual labor could yeah. be realized. No, I, I would like the land to exist if they choose to go on the land. Okay. So Some no place for them to go. Yes, if they choose to. Yeah, if that, they, that they choose could be forced to. There. And if people could help make that so there'd be some place where they might want to go or be able to yes. go and survive. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, it's uh, like the, sanctuary. Well, the land model is in the center of every need they have. It's in the center of all the surrounding helps right. that would come from different directions right. would, would be able to centralize their efforts in kind, mm -hmm. and that's in kind of whatever they're doing to help, yeah. clothing, whatever, could be centralized. Recycled materials through the county dumps right. can be brought right onto the HLR. Uh -huh. Okay, there's your spoon. HLR? I'm sorry, Homeless Land Reservation. I say Homeless yes, land pardon. reservation. Yes, you okay. might hear me say it. And you said, it. yeah, you talk quickly, and mm -hmm. you're talking about having it scattered pardon. around the country. Well, one places. for each county in the country. Wait, how many for. counties are there? I don't know. How there many are approximately 1,000 uh, counties. 1,000. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, one so for we're each talking county. About, okay. Right. So we're talking about 1,000 homeless land reservations. And what in would the this States. be like? What, would, what is your perception of what it, well, how, what would it take for that? And it would make it so there would be a place for them to go if they want. If all it provided was a place where they were not trespassing, if all it provided was a place to collect water uh, and, uh, and, 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 right. and the few things that they have, mm -hmm. okay? But a, a sort of a sanctuary is, as, as, as a place to gain hope because these people are so condemned and so banished and so isolated and so 
kicked out of our society, yeah. that they're even forbidden to form their own society. Yeah, right. To, right, to right. gather what they have and survive together. It's yeah. against the law. Yeah. It's a legal yeah. assembly. Yeah, move okay. along. Move yeah, along. All the years move that, along. We can't have yeah. more than so many homeless people assembling. Yeah, they're you know, beginning to disperse to, them. They're beginning to turn that against the Occupy movement. People too sure, trying to organize sure, to redress their sure. grievance. Yeah. If I could say how. Yeah. And thank you for sticking with me. No, absolutely. Okay. A trying. Yeah, it's a huge subject. Yeah. The national policy of the United States government with respect to homeless people is passive euthanasia. They're euthanizing, intentionally euthanizing the population. Uh -huh. The policy of the state of New York, this state, is mm. passive euthanasia. In the 1980s and early 1990s, there were 150,000 people have been Homeless people have been euthanized, euthanized in New York City, and you stood there and you watched them. Uh, walked went, right over them. Yeah, yeah, and you went and bought your wife a thousand dollar dress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you watched them die. Uh, you didn't defend homeless women out there. there You're was, not a man if you didn't. And there wasn't anybody in the political class who was defending no them because they were the no lowest of the low. Nobody yeah. would defend them or stand up for their rights or interests. They were. It, it, it was a, a policy. They were scapegoated. As losers or something. Yeah, yeah unfit right. individuals. Yeah. Eliminate them from yeah. the society. Uh -huh. uh, a passive euthanasia. It, it emanates from the principle of eugenic. A eugenic Eugenics, attitude of yeah. Hitler, of Stalin, of Hussein. Yeah, yeah. And they died. Now, yeah. in the 1980s, when I, when I walked the streets in New York so yeah. that I could learn about homeless people, yeah, right. Right? I'm going through Penn Station, and I'm alone. I didn't meet Indio. Yet. No, there was four. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm alone. Indio is a great guy. He is a great guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Indio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you see yeah. me smiling? Yeah. yeah so know, here yeah. I'm in Penn Station, and I'm walking down dark corridors, and I make a turn. All of a sudden, I don't know, it was early 80s yeah. or mid-80s. I make a turn. Post-Reagan. Huh? It's worth mentioning post Reagan. Yeah, we'll go into yeah. Reagan. Yeah. Because so, it, it, it got worse at that time. Sure. The homelessness sure. in a qualitative new way. Well, there was no prior homeless population in the United States. It there was. was there must have been some. There, no? were, there was alcohol tramping. Yeah. Different conditions. That of is life. different. We yeah. want to make a distinction. Yeah, the creation of homeless population was due to the slashing of social programs in the United States. Yeah. The stuff to the Social Security Fund. And it was all used to build the Desert Storm Army. They oh. replace the Social Security funds later. Okay. okay. But yeah. here I am in Penn Station. Yeah, I know. Right? Right. I yeah. walk around the corner, and what do I see? 150 homeless people in a corridor. I remember. Right? Right. I live right. near Penn Station. Right. I can right. see them. Their heads are all pointed the same way. Their feet are all pointed the same way. They're on a square piece of uh, cardboard, yeah. all the same size. I saw uniformity. I saw cooperation. I saw community. I saw love and caring for each other. Mm -hmm. Right there in Penn Station, I saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Then I went and wrote American Homeless. Uh -huh. I had to know what I was talking about. Right. They will help each other. They do look out for each other. Right. But the law forbids the common lands. As as a place of abode for the accruement of resources and the protection of life and property. Homelessness is unlawful. Their, their homeless condition is, their homeless status is a condition of perpetual criminality. They are continually on someone else's land, yeah. inevitably forced to move on to some illusory, de uh, lawful destination presumed to exist but never Found. Yeah. Please read American Homeless on at website homelesslandmodel.com. It was mm. finished in 1995. I went up to the New York State Senate. I gave them I gave them 160 copies of this book in the New York State Legislature. They throw them out. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me that the policy of the state of New York isn't passive euthanasia if they threw out 180 copies of this book, mm. which is a plan to give land rights to homeless people at no cost to the state, at no cost to the town? Taxpayer, at no cost to the downtown business merchant, and at no cost to the homeless, they threw them out. That means you want them dead, people. And they were dead. 150,000 died in the streets. You of got York. some quotes in here. One of, them, one of them is here homelessness is a social control and penal sanctions for the worker if he does not work. So that's one quote. You have another one here. World history records that about 500. Leaders controlled the destiny of every man, woman, and child ever born. Yes. 500. Yes. That's the emperors. Yes. Many statistics imply that about 10% of the population alive at any given moment in time own or control the surface of the earth. 10% own all the surface yes, of so the they, earth. Yes, and they forced the remainder of the population into tenancy, uh, Wage labor and homelessness. Wage slavery is called. Yeah, wage Correctly slavery. Correctly so, yeah. yeah. And it says, this amazing control by the landed, 
you're a very interesting land, has forced the majority of the population into tenancy, wage labor, and homelessness. Yes. Unequal distribution of land caused poverty and homelessness. Some say it is also the cause of crime. That's our Clarence Darrow in 18, 1903. Clarence Darrow said that in, in 1903. Clarence Darrow was my hero, one of my heroes. And yeah. there it says, inspired by Darrow and edified by a king, I have a dream, and I meant every word. Uh-huh. So a lot of people maybe just think, well, wh uh, what is the attitude in your perception of most of the people uh, in terms of the matter of the homeless? They walk by them, yeah, they walk over them. Or, or no place for them. Pardon me? When they when they were thrown out of uh, Liberty Park, uh, 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 the church, what Judson Church, opened their doors to them. The churches would traditionally want to open the doors to them, but there's no place at all where they can go where there is a place for them unless they have a home. They don't have a home. They don't have land. Right. And that's an well, issue that is is so fundamental to the economic order. They right. want to make it clear. I started with understanding that if you control all the land, mm -hmm. you control the people. That's what enclosement of the land means. If uh -huh. you control all the land, you control all the people. You don't have to control the people. You just control the land. And and and. and you, but in doing so, you can automatically control the people. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. You control the economics of the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, can I read uh, New York State Senate? By all this means, by all means. Now, make it clear. You talk very fast. Yeah. I say, slow down a little. And what is this that you're reading? It, make it clear. <laughs> yes. A little slow. Uh, starting seven years ago, mm -hmm. uh, after. After uh, the, the, book, the yeah. New York State Legislature threw out 180 copies of my book, I went to my own um, assemblywoman and I said, look, they threw out 180 copies of my book. There wasn't one letter. There wasn't one email. Is this abnormal? And my assemblywoman said, I believe so. It is abnormal. Yeah. So what they did was they sent my book up to David Patterson in David Albany. David Patterson, he was the, uh, When he was minority leader. Minority leader, okay. David Patterson referred the book for the Senate uh -huh. out to a man named Mr. Dorsey Whitehead. Okay. Mr. Dorsey Whitehead fell in love with the book. Really? And he told me so. Okay, yes. okay, okay. And uh, uh, upon his recommendation, mm -hmm. okay, a New York State Senate bill should be... Uh, uh, proposed. What was or should well, be? Well, it was. It, Actually, he's the one that steered me through it. Uh -huh. So he mailed me, introduced his memorandum, and said, uh -huh. write the bill, uh -huh. and uh, present it to the Senate. That so was I, about 185 or so, you said? or what? No, I uh, uh, have to think. That would be about uh, four, about five years ago. Oh, only? Years okay, ago. okay. Yeah. So it's more... Well, I've been up there ever since. Yeah, so right. Okay, good. Good for you. A lot of good it does. So this is a, a draft measure of what might be put before yes. the New York well, Assembly? Is this is ne nearly a bill put in motion, but I uh -huh. have to start again. Could it be brought up again? Sure. And you'd like to uh, get some people in the audience sure, maybe getting behind the idea that sure. this should be brought up and by our I'd political I'd class. I'd like to address uh, assembly people in New York City and state senators in New York City. Uh, I'm going to answer a question later, like, we're in a city. Why would we care about land just outside the city? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to talk to speak to you uh, about that in a moment. Okay. Um, New York State introduces memorandum in support. This is a memo on an original bill. It's still on file with the New York State Senate. Mm -hmm. And I electronically lobby, lobby it to every senator in the nation and to uh, every U.S. senator in the nation. I do uh, it electronically from my website. You can mm -hmm. print this out from my website. Okay. Push one button, boom. It what comes is out the website? Can you say it? Quick? Homeless Land model.com homelesslandmodel.com and okay. you can print out this bill okay read us the bill or whatever right. the proposal title homeless land reservation the homeless will own the land in common by deed using a non-profit corporation each reservation will be between one and four soccer fields in size one for each county determined by the catchments of area population purpose to preserve the lives of homeless people from untimely, unnecessary, unrequired death and for the accruement of resources in order to survive the elements. Yeah. Summary of provisions. Each county in New York State shall have one homeless land reservation. Each county. <laughs> pardon me. With, with administrative codes suspended in order to preserve life and to reorganize lives with direction, hope, and community. Mm -hmm. The state will not mandate persons to homeless land reservations. No. That's a concentration camp. Yeah. So we put it yeah. here right here yeah, in the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It, 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 if they want to. They, it's it's there for them if they want. Their own will. Yeah. Existing law. There is none. Justification. 
Homeless land reservations are intended to ease the burden of eminent death, human suffering, and social detachment. Legislative history, there is none. Physical implications. The state will not provide money or resources. The state will only apportion land. The homeless must pay a tax to New York State an amount in proportion to their income. Go pass the hat. Mm. Local physical implications. Locations must not affect the public visually or socially. Land near a county dump close to a bus stop is recommended. Now, people... Bus stop, put them in touch with yeah, the Yeah, or we route yeah. the bus stop, yeah. either uh, one, yeah, right? yeah, 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 okay. Yep. Yeah. So, um, oh, where was I? Um, sorry about this. That's all right, that's all I right. Just, I just, I drew a blank here now. No, okay, so that you're, that's a proposal... Uh, near a bus stop you ended, right? Do you want yeah. to read more of that? I mean, that's... No, it's, it's, it's yeah. finished, but bear in okay. mind, yeah. this is a, a plan at no cost to the state, no cost to the taxpayer, and no, nothing... Hey, hey, working guy, you lay bricks. You, you work with your hands. Nothing comes out of your paycheck. Nothing. And you can preserve life. You can give a home to people. You can give them a home. Where is this land going to come from? Is that from land that is under the control of the government? Of the state, yes. Of the state. Yes, it'll be apportioned. Yeah. And, and well, these these portion these places do exist in a reasonable way in which would be amenable to what your idea is. They could be got without costing anything. Right. Well, you know, by the an allocation by the state. Allocation by the state. Yeah. And, and you know something, people, the the poor can't steal the land and they can't destroy the land. But what it's about there, it's sustainable? But uh, so if there's just a piece of land there, there's nothing but a big field or something. Yep. Um, could there not be some? Uh, you know, some canvas or some tents or something, sure. or uh, water, uh, certainly. kerosene, uh, certainly. heat, certainly. that kind of thing. That's up to society. Ken Churchill fights for the land right. Uh, Whatever land they want right. to put. Yeah, I only fight for the land. I'm fighting for land for them, nothing else. If you want to put something, if you want to put a tent on there, you'll own the land under the tent. You want to put a little shanty up, you'll own the land on it. Because in 1981, Tent City was dismantled. People 1981. Only That's California. Go on. Why yes. don't you go? And why don't you talk about it? Because I heard you say there wasn't landless. Uh, there was something that happened particularly after Mr. Reagan became president yeah. in 1980. Share a little of that. Okay. And there was a fellow out in California that yes. was a hero of this movement. Uh, yes, of all of it. How, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, you tie it in a certain sense in this modern uh, thing to the Reagan Reagan yes. economics. Yeah? I, I first became a homelessness advocate by listening to radio broadcasts from yeah. California yeah. by Mitch Snyder. Okay. The first homelessness advocate. Okay. Okay. He when when the social programs were slashed in America. Yeah. People start to show up on the streets of California, mm -hmm. and Mitch Schneider, I guess he left the East Coast, and he went over there, and mm -hmm. he started to organize these people into Tent City. Tent City, yeah. okay. This is for like 30-something years ago. It's a little bit right. like for Looney Park, or for, Lugia, you know, the Liberty Park, where the Occupy movement happened. No, well, they, they, that had political Well, concept. he organized this, okay. He gave them home. Yeah. He organized them, uh -huh. and, and it was dispersed. It was disbanded. And the reason I determined... The one in California. Yes, about and now. it was... Where the, was it located? I, I'm sure it was somewhere off L.A., but... Oh, oh it population. was down south. Okay, yeah, yeah okay. So... Weather's so, easy. Uh -huh. yeah. So, it was through... Called, called Tent City failed because the people owned the tents, but they didn't own the land under the tents. Right. And I realized in 81, because I, I, I was educating criminal law, uh -huh. I, I realized nature of... Lawful conduct, illegal conduct, I understand that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I realized that it was mm -hmm. the, it'll be dispersed any time that people don't own the land. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in any attempt to have a, you know, a, a worthwhile tent city anywhere in the United States, it's doomed to fail mm -hmm. because the people don't own the land. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm saying if they own the land in, in a reservation system, they can put what they want on What's it. What's the attitude that there is toward the reservations for the American Indian people, Sioux and so forth? Well, how does that work? We gave reservations to the uh, Aboriginal Americans that were here that we took their land or by, took the large part of it and yeah. then put them on the res, as they say. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, means and everything talks about that. Is there a model? I heard you re reference that. Well, I use the American uh, reservation system as, a, as my model for American homeless people. Okay. I'm saying, now, if, if it still works for uh, American Indians, uh, I, it doesn't create wealth for them, but they own the land. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their home. They mm -hmm. own it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that homeless people in America... So nobody can come there and say, move along. Right, that's it. That's yeah. the point of it. Get Even though they here. may have a nomadic yeah. instinct you write about. They're yeah, yeah, part yeah. of the human... Yeah. Maybe um, another the show. DNA. Maybe yeah, another yeah, show. Yeah, anyway, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. moving, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I'm saying that um, 
that the American homeless land model should follow the model of the Native American Indian, oh, yeah. and they are guides all the way through it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're people that can guide you right through. They know how to share common land. So they, I they, talked. To, I, I I conceived of American homeless land model on the Shinnecock Indian Reservation uh -huh. is where I got the uh, that that I knew that land was the answer, buildings will never be the answer. Well, you remember Grapes of Wrath, Tom Joad and all that, and they had these places where they could go, they were being taken advantage of, coming out from Oklahoma, they'd been stolen yeah. and everything, and then they had these camps, there was one scene where it was a yeah. good camp, oh, and yeah, yeah. Be police be were going to yeah. bake them up yeah, and yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Isn't there been attempts at trying to have some place for the people who are maybe even politically oriented or something, but places where people who are down and out and, uh, uh, you know, have to have a place to go. The it, it, there's none of that been in our history, or has anything been done that it, way? As far as I can tell, yeah. from what I know, this is the first legal attempt to gain land for homeless people. Also, to get some public consciousness about it. Yes. Well, wouldn't yeah, there be sure, something be uh, to be said for the fact of uh, if there was this there, then there could be help given to the people that have a place to go if they're down and out in a way that a homeless person obviously is. There no? is a, there Don't is you think that would be a good thing to have available to the people? I certainly do. Uh, it would be like, a, it'd be like the, the church idea of sanctuary against the right. slings and arrows of an outrageous fortune that ends in death. Yeah, freezing it, on boots it, at night it, it, in the, it, ends, uh, it ends in death. and then all they do is say move along. You know. Yes, it ends okay. in death. Okay, so it's worth considering. Um, but you didn't get any support in the assembly or among no, the political no, class. Not at all. Uh, have they you got, gotten they, Have you gotten anybody saying positively? Do you think that might be a good idea? It's in, do they say it's impractical? Um, yeah. Who cares about them? Why don't they get a job? Right, they, right. Go well, get a job and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, the, I get a lot, the only support I've ever gotten all the way through mm -hmm. was from free speech radio DJs okay. and from free speech uh, television okay. hosts such as yourself. Okay. No one else has put their own energy and their own sacrifice behind the dissemination of this economic Do you theory. think it's not been understood or has been thought to be irrele irrelevant because all they have to do is get a job and join the rat race and right. become a good citizen right. and all that sort of thing? There's a lot of, do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Well, that yeah. brings me to, to this, if it's the only thing I get to say. Uh, homeless people have been replaced by machines. They're being replaced. Yeah, they're, no, people are being replaced people are, but by being machines in a very serious way that test all of our economic models out of history. When yeah. we were children, when we yeah. were children, mm -hmm. Harold, you yeah. and I, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. we were told as children, someday people will be replaced by machines and robots. Well, here it is, people. Yeah, it's here coming. It is. It's coming. It's it, only no, it's started, here. really. It's not coming. It's here. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh -huh. And these homeless people have been replaced by machines. One backhoe replaces uh, 75 men with a shovel. One in a nano, heartbeat. In one, a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. One algorithm will replace yeah. 50,000 yeah. clerks. If you consider how many men, and maybe men and women, so I'm thinking more of as, as she went, you know, as yeah, she goes, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, just the industrial machinery law has replaced uh, um, nearly everyone. <laughs> now, the other category. That's a huge thing. Yeah. The yeah. other category. Homeless people, uh, people have been... American homeless people have been replaced by machines and highly specialized forms of modern employment. Uh, okay. Sorry to exaggerate that. So no. I want the words to come out there because that's from Veblen in 1899. Veblen, bring him <laughs> out. Let me show the book. He's somebody that you want to know. Veblen said and I can't believe it myself. This is one of the people heroes. Being replaced. I'm, I'm going to close this one up to the theory of the leisure class. You tell me it's out of print. It's out of print. Thorsten Veblen is a classic. How yes. can it be out of print? I don't yes. know. Yes, it's but, out of print. I think it says so in this book that, well, you know, I think it does. But I believe it's out of print. And to, to forthcoming generations, uh, consider getting this book back in print because in there is every understanding about the human being and the human species that, that one might need to know. Talk to us what Thorsten Veblen taught us in this All book. All the answers are in there. As okay, as talk to what some of the answers sure. are in that. Sure. If we're going to concern ourselves with, well, another paid worker... That, uh, 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 an underpaid worker that cannot afford a home is an industrial slave. Wow. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. So I wrote that before I read Veblen, but like, let's get to that point. Why is an underpaid worker uh, that can't afford a home an industrial slave? Well, I didn't really ever have an interest in uh, studying economics until right. I read uh, Veblen late, late right. in life. Right. And to move through it very quickly, Veblen says that 
human economics is based upon the difference between f female work and male work. Really? Yes. Okay. It's, it's based upon the, the anatomy of a woman versus the anatomy of a man. Well, okay, they are different. With yeah. the, the anatomy and physiology of a woman is for the birthing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's the purpose that it's best nurturing. serves. Nurturing. Birthing. Yeah. yeah birthing, birthing, birthing to begin with. Yeah. Right. For the preservation of the species, she will birth. Mm. Right. That's her anatomy. Uh, her anatomy and physiology. That's a female Dem principle. Yeah. Sense, demands yeah, yeah. on on her yeah, biologically. Yeah, yeah. A man is anatomy and physiology is designed to kill. Sorry to say it. Kill oh. the animal. Feed the woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Feed himself. Mm -hmm. Right. So economics was based from uh, primordial hunters. Where, where the primitive barbarian, um, if he was more intelligent, this is prior to language, but if he was more intelligent, uh -huh. he could hunt down the animal, and he could, he could find it sooner, and he could kill it sooner. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. So, <coughs> not only did he exploit the animal, mm -hmm. he exploited, he began to make the man next to him an economic slave. How right? is that? Well, that's because he killed the animal, and he forced a, Somebody a, had to a, carry it back lesson. to the camp. There you go. You remember yeah. that's amazing. No, I don't remember. It's just natural. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he made a slave of the man that was with him that wasn't bright enough to find the animal and kill it. Those things cool. Okay. He had to carry it back to the encampment. Right? Yeah. So that begins the economics of man. It starts there. And it begins the uh, Thorstein Veblen theory of economics being rooted to exploitation versus drudgery. Someone will do the exploitation. Someone else will do the drudgery. Slave, master, and slave. Yes, yeah. master and slave. Uh -huh. Master, slave okay. relationship. It continues to this very day. Absolutely. Yeah. To this very day. And Veblen says <coughs> mankind only has two uh, choices in human economics. Mm. One, <coughs> pardon me, accept, right. accept the fraudulent economic system that you live with mm -hmm. or return to the economic system of forcible seizure by the primitive barbarian. Now spell that out in detail. Sure. Yeah. You, everyone out there on the other side, you've only have two choices. And, and new people will replace you, and they're all going to have two cho choices. Mm -hmm. And Veblen wrote this in 1899. Okay. You only have two choices. <coughs> Except a fraudulent economic system which replaced forcible seizure. Mm. The economics of... They replaced forcible seizure. Well, let, let's, uh, let's look at it the other way. Let's yeah. say... Let's say... Um, let's say the Vikings came through uh, through your street. Uh, they didn't bother themselves with uh, much. They stole everything you had. That's yeah. forcible seizure. The Vikings came through, they took your economics, and they left. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yeah, that, so yeah. that was the economic system of the human being. They couldn't take the land. No, unless no, they stayed. No, but yeah. that, that came later. That came later. Okay, <laughs> that that's called later. colonialism. We were talking about initially yeah. Yeah. how yeah. Economic, human economics begins yeah. with yeah. forcible seizure. Oh, yeah. okay. That's okay. the, I, you yeah, know. Yeah, conquest. Well, you're eating a piece of meat. I rip it right out of your hands and that's I eat it. That's, that's right. forcible yeah. seizure. Love the jungle. Yeah. You did all the work. I exploited mm. you. Yeah, right. You know. It's and, called uh, realpolitik. Also, in, re in, in, in geopolitical thinking, whoever's got the power to, com com to conquer wins yeah. and wins, and yeah. that's what uh, motivates and forces the others into that, That's what we yeah. call real politics. <coughs> uh -huh. a, a power comes out of the end of the gun, weapons, and the weapons finally become species lethal about 1970. Mm -hmm. In terms of a collective understanding of the human condition, I just bring it up on an aside. Sure. Also, he was in, eight, eight, in, 19, uh, in 1899, the Veblen, and that, and then there was also Henry George at that time. Henry George had the year of a lot of the intellectuals, but I'm sorry, that's off on a side tack. That's okay. Mm. Now, <clears throat> uh, Thorstein Veblen describes to us in the, in the Theory of the Leisure class yeah. that social institutions evolve, and we don't have time to go into that very much, but mm. they evolve. And so the forcible seizure of the primitive barbarian mm. evolved to forcial, forcible seizure of the modern barbarian. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to confuse you. Mm. When the Romans came through, they put you in slavery, but when they left, they left you a road. So there was a difference between the modern barbarian, as she goes, mm -hmm. you know, than the primitive barbarian. Mm -hmm. The modern barbarian said, that's what we are. We leave a little behind us. Mm -hmm. We leave a little something worthwhile behind us. The and primitive barbarians did not. An aqueduct or a road? Yeah, or, it's or, yeah, yeah right. was, uh, some benefit. Did you ever see the Monty Python movie, Life of Brian, where they talk about that? 
where they were. It's funny. It's a funny scene. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. I'll bet they do. It's funny. Is there, saying you know? they, well, they're, they're, they're oppressors. They say they didn't bring us anything. And one of the little pipsqueaks says, well, they did build a bunch of roads. And, oh, yeah, well, it's right. for the well, road. Well, right. And they did bring but, an aqueduct. And, you know. We're, we're, yeah. we're really looking at. And there the, has been some progress, material progress. Yeah, we're looking at the evolution of yeah. institutions. Because you had capital accumulation. Got a little yeah. better. Got a little better. A little yeah. more organized. A little yeah. better. Yeah. Until it evolved through institution after institution after institution. It was always unjust in terms of political organization. It always still is. It was a serfdom. Yeah, yeah it still no. is. Yeah, but now we have unjust. the fraudulent interpretation of serfdom. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So Rebel was saying that the economics of, 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 uh, of uh, primitive barbaric seizure evolved into the f man's fraudulent economic system. Right, right, right. the economic system. Yeah. He did this in 1899. Yeah, right, right, right. And we right. ended up with fra fraudulent so mortgage arrangements in 2008. Everything is a fraud now. You yeah. see it. Your yeah. eyes are open. Uh, yeah. Everybody in New York sees it. It's well, not, I'm not sure you know, if everybody does, but more and more people do. And it's the basis yeah. of a lot of what they call Occupy, Wall Street or Occupy yes. the World. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's There's coming out in light. Out These yeah. are good people out yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so... Uh, all. Uh, we, that that is true until the year 2012, where you're working two jobs, but you can't afford a home. Uh -huh. yeah. And you're, you're, you know, you're working a job, your wife's working half a job, you still can't afford a home. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so an underpaid worker that cannot afford a home is an industrial slave. Mm -hmm. Economic yeah. slavery, drudgery, yeah. never ended. Yeah. So economics is based upon exploitation versus drudgery. Uh -huh. So. Um, now, um, I, I guess I'd like to get back so to that. So there might be some people in, a, in, in, and that's the only choice you have, and that would be something that would be, and you have to drive 40 miles to get to a thing. Everybody's growling at one another to go and, to go and do some cubicle ca capitalist function that an algorithm is going to be able to displace you anyway, but we don't have any other way of distributing demand or buying power to the people well, other than their slave wages. Yeah, we don't that's have the way we distribute we don't any have the, demand buying power to the people. We don't have They're the, like serfs, yeah. We don't have the third alternative. And they don't have uh, any ownership uh, of anything. Third alternative. People, we, most people don't have any ownership. It's just a tiny class what of people own everything. What choice does the working guy have? Yeah. You I, know, I'm not putting it down. Mm -hmm. You know, no. I believe in people that work with their hands. Well, I do. if they want. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so this brings us to my economic theory, which caused the writing of American Homeless Landmark. Right, it wasn't right. based on Veblen. It, yeah. it was no. based on what I found. Uh, it was informed by Veblen. Intuitively. Yeah. I read yeah. Veblen later. But, yeah, right. But, okay. uh, in 1978, it was a precursor to me becoming a homelessness advocate and, that, and causing my ears to go up when I heard Mitch Schneider talk in 81 in California right. about Tent City. Right. It was an interview by Les Crane. Uh -huh. uh, Les Crane, I remember that. Les, the Les, he was on television, no? The, the no? turning point, yeah. Les Crane, turning yeah. point in my life. Yeah, I remember that. Les yeah. Crane in 1978 interviews Alvin Toffler. Oh wow! Yeah, Alvin yeah. Toffler, yeah. the third wave. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I didn't have to read Alvin Toffler's books because he explained them so well on yeah. the West Crane interview. Right. Yeah. I got it all. Right. right. Yeah. He's a visionary writer in 1978, mm. saying, comes out with the book The Third Wave and mm. says, and says, mm. the United States it existed in three waves. The first wave in the United States mm. was the political. Agricultural, agricultural society. Mm -hmm. It was the first wave. Well, this, that's true for humanity in a larger context, yeah. The second wave. Neolithic revolution, yeah, made possible empires and things, or civilization. Civilization means city dwelling in literal terms. And there was wandering and gathering for 180,000 years of our existence before we finally discovered agriculture and animal domestication, got surplus from the food quest, right? So then civilization started eight, ten thousand years ago. The second wave yeah. was the political industrial society. Okay. The third wave. Steam the, engine time? The, uh, the third wave in the United States was political industrial society. It began with the political agricultural society. It evolves into the political industrial society. When does society. that change take place? Is that uh, Adam Smith's steam I, I, engine, I, I, 1776, all of that? I, I would really need to move through it real quick. Okay. So the, so 
we begin with the political, uh, the first wave, the political agricultural society. We move to the second wave, the political industrial society. And he says soon we'll be on the other side of the political agricultural into the political information society. Uh -huh. This man predicted this in 1978, yeah. and I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I've seen the brightest person in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. a writer, uh -huh. a writer. <laughs> yeah, right? okay, yeah. My life changed there. Okay. It changed there. Mm -hmm. So now that brings me, with that information, knowing that information, mm -hmm. that brings me to say, hey, I know that Alvin Toffler is not here to say, hey, Ken, right. come on, right. you're off the map. His wife was okay. major but work with him. He, his wife worked with him majorly. Let's, con Toffler, let's consider the fourth wave of people. Team, yeah. What might the fourth wave be? Okay? Mm -hmm. If we've gone through a cycle that had people on the land, took people off the land, and then came in with the information society, the fourth wave might be the people must decompress from the city populations back out across on the land. Okay. Through urban sprawl and planned homeless land reservations along with urban sprawl. What sprawl. would be on that? Home, what would the reservation, as your, if, if something could be done and that could be established in each county? Yeah. across the country. Yeah. That's a lot. That'd be a lot of land. And uh, you said what? four football fields. That's uh, football fields a 1,000 feet. That'd be 4,000 length. That's a pretty sizable chunk of it. What would it look like? It just looked like an empty field. And no, it's got an empty what field, want. but what happens after that's a designated? Oh, okay. Well, here's the Could thing. Could you get electricity? Could you get water? Could you get uh, heating? Could you get tents? Could you get houses? Could you get... What would happen on that land? Here's the basic principle. And how would it be governed? And how would it be organized? It's in the book. Refer okay. to the book about it. I know, but I'm asking yeah. you because you have oh, to summarize. I, okay, but I'll just try to finish with the well, economic... how might it be as a promise? Okay. Huh? What can people have to ask? Them? What's in it for me? The state has to say, what's in it for me? The downtown business merchant, it, but it provides relief for everyone in society. Okay. To decompress the populations of the city somewhere, right. where is it going to be mm -hmm. adjacent to the cities? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. outside the cities, just out the municipalities, just outside the towns and villages if they choose. Mm -hmm. But mandated by law, one for each county across the United well, States. Why isn't that something that's called like the suburbs? You know, you go out well, there and... Okay, you well, okay, the, the suburbs are, uh, yes, okay, I, I've got to skip that in order to okay. explain that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. To finish the theory... Yeah, okay. go ahead, sorry. It's, it's, called, it's called the theory of decompression. <laughs> In America, we have the vertical high-rise population, as right. we know in New York or any city. Mm -hmm. That's the vertical high, high. That's the vertical population trend. Right. Urban sprawl is a horizontal population okay. trend. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. You could picture an x-axis and a y-axis if you like to take it further. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to go so far into that. Uh -huh. I don't want to edify myself. People uh -huh. are dying out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm so here. I'm it's here. inevitable uh -huh. that what you have America has over-concentrated cities. Mm -hmm. We don't have a problem with open land. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with over-concentrated cities. I have an yeah. economic There's plan. There's a lot of land. Yeah. I have yeah. an economic plan that serves the homeless while it serves the economic system and creates equilibria, equilibrium to offset the inevitable economic collapse caused by the vertical population trend, uh -huh. over-inflating the price of tenancy, cleaning out the M2 money, money in circulation, mm -hmm. okay? okay, making uh, drying mm -hmm. out the economies, mm -hmm. okay? okay, and saying that... The, the population, we're at the point now where it has to sprawl horizontally mm -hmm. at the same, at, at least to offset to some degree the cost of tenancy in the vertical population trend. Mm -hmm. It's a counterbalance, people. Mm -hmm. and it's an economic counterbalance mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you must consider. Yeah, but the okay. thing is, the people are all in the cities. They're going that way across the world and everything like that. China, they're all going into the cities now. Well, they used to be out on the land. Sure. And, Sure, but yeah. they have an industrial revolution. They have an industrial see, revolution. See, are we in a post-industrial revolution? Are people going to be put out of work in the traditional way in which work has been done in a major way? And if so, how are they going to get any income in order to buy the things that they're going to need to live somewhat of a decent life? I don't have those answers. The okay. industrial revolution is over, according to Alvin Toffler. And then we entered the third wave, yeah. according to his vision. Yeah. We entered it a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, the internet, age of internet, Toffler sort us. Well, that's not very long ago. Well, Toffler. Toffler saw it in 78, and the yeah. internet hits about 
98, whatever. Come from the Turing machine. Uh, but he, very he, he hit the nail on the head. Let me well, tell you, he's a visionary. Well, well right? okay, yeah. But that also the visionary. There was others too. Uh, Keynes said the same thing. He set up the whole international monetary fund. Uh, the internet, all the institutions. Keynesianism was a major thing. And he said uh, in a letter to his grandchildren, "Yeah, in the future you're going to be confronted with hard to see." And he was writing in 1930. And he was writing a letter to the grandchildren that's about now, you're going to be confronted with massive technologically induced unemployment. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Well, are we I, going to be I, confronted with that? Because the only way we have to distribute income to the folks, for the mass of the people, is through them having a job in a thing that they get money for doing what they're doing. Uh, a wage slave um, I, uh, uh, condition to the people who own all the assets, which are increasingly producing the wealth. It's the capital assets or the capital or the extended consciousness that's creating the wealth and displacing the people. And we have a great commitment in terms of identity and so forth to this thing called the work ethic and to working and to do it, working your way up, pulling yourself up, Norman Vincent Peale, all of that kind of stuff. How do we address those issues in terms of your land based thing? It would be placed well, for them to um, repair to. As a, as a land advocate, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm reluctant to go into other areas, okay, but, I will, but I will. Okay. We're in thought gridlock We've right now. We've only got about, about eight minutes, ten we're, minutes We're in go. thought gridlock right now. Mm, okay. now. I'll answer it briefly that way. Okay, okay. We're in a gridlock in Fair terms enough. of a thought. Fair enough, right. Okay, so, so American homeless land model is an attempt to create a new economic institution to break through thought gridlock. Okay, that, good. That we good. That's what we exactly need. Yeah. We need new economic institutions. Absolutely. American right. homeless land model is one of them. And it could be good for the homeless. Yes. Somebody was, should be speaking for They will be included. They yeah. will be included. Yeah, right. Rather you than just dying on the street. Now listen right. to this. In 50 years, you can call, you can, if the people choose, they can declare their homeless land reservation a village if they choose to, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a pioneer town and grows. Mm -hmm. Then you move over the homeless land reservation and begin again. That reservation would serve the new village and the former municipality or city. It's mm -hmm. an economic theory to decompress the populations of the cities upon the land, out upon the land. If you knew Bill Wilson, okay, you're out there. If you knew Bill Wilson, who's young, Bill Wilson? Well, I, I, I'm speaking in code for a moment. Oh, okay. Just a moment. I'll explain later. Yeah. But um, this, I have a way created that if homeless land reservations did exist, I know how to merge the self-help movement with the homeless land reservation system. Okay, yeah, you can okay, make I it know bloom. how to they do can it. Make it bloom. Sure, you have a meeting on the yeah. reservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And the population of the municipalities. It's like what they call a general assembly in occupy circles, yeah. Yeah, yeah in, in, in any let's city. Let's get some I water here. Let's, the minute let's you throw the social, you give me yeah. the social experiment. I'm trying yeah. for it in Woodstock. I'm yeah. trying hard, all right? Are you doing it? Okay, yeah. good. Okay. So, well, I'm trying everywhere, but yeah, you know, good. That, good that, for you. Good it's going to happen. It might happen in Woodstock, but mm. the thing is, Woodstock's that, a hip town. Yeah. That anytime there's a homeless land reservation system, mm. the self help movement can merge with it very easily by having a meeting on the list. Okay? Yeah. And then the people from the municipality are one population that revolves on the homeless land reservation mm -hmm. they encounter. Mm -hmm. And by the, by the um, power of example, people learn how to help themselves. They would go to a meeting by choice. Uh -huh. By choice. Right, right. And they would learn, they would build character and understand the power of example uh -huh. and life building mm -hmm. because the self help movement works. Uh -huh. It works. And, and I will uh, you got I will some protect instant, anonymity. Yeah, you know? and you can have some instant, yeah. uh, you have instant contact through the internet through education yeah. of the highest yeah. order that anybody yeah. can get autodidactically. It could, it could go quick. You know, you can educate yourself autodidactically. Everybody can, auto, off a cell phone, you can auto, autodidactically educate yourself. But yeah, okay, yeah, right, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, Harold, thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, I just felt like saying that at this moment for this, uh, this, this privilege, massive privilege. What privilege? The privilege of being on this show. No, to, no, it's really interesting. Now, what people. about, why the four football fields? Why not uh, 20 football fields? What is the limit? Well, how did you come up with well, that? Uh, and yeah. uh, what are the political problems? What are the well, reasons that there isn't a people in the assembly picking it up and running with it and so forth? Why do you think, and what do we have to do in order to get people of influence plus general uh, support from the society for this idea. Right. We've only got about five minutes left. Right. So what we need to do, in. Harold, as a people, as a society, mm -hmm. is to change our minds. Okay. We know the homeless are being ex exterminated. We know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We might put it 
somewhere else in, 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 yeah, in I our think being, it, but we know it. There's probably so lots of people in New York who had to walk past the homeless oh, and don't know what to do, and it, there should be the something, and there is nothing. Yeah. In the 1980s, they were leaning against every wall. Yeah. They were on every side. We had to walk around them, and, and, and I was in those trenches as a writer to yeah. learn yeah. why, you know, and, the, and all this wealth we yeah. would be doing yeah. this. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. It's got to be a, a cringe on the soul or something of people. Yeah. You know, and they should listen to somebody's got an idea which might be done, which is you talk. I, I, Couple I, I, minutes left. I, Wind I, it up. I'd like to say that American Homeless was discussed by uh, Ron Kuby on uh, <coughs> Kirby and Kudis. Uh, the Kirby, lawyer. Kirby. He was with Kunstler, the guy with Kunstler? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Ron Kuby. Kunstler was a danger. Curtis and Kuby mm. discussed this on Curtis and Kuby National Radio Curtis about Sowell, Curtis, yeah. Curtis and Kuby yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about five years back. They and, did. And oh, I yeah. called to confirm it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the producer, Frank uh, Morano, mm -hmm. uh, he confirmed it. They discussed it twice. And where did because, they come because up Because Ron, Ron Kuby said, listen to this man. Oh, so good. I'm glad to hear that. Ron Kuby. Yeah, Kuby okay. was right next Ron, to Kunstler. Yeah. He's uh, one of the finest civil yeah. rights attorneys in the, in the country. Right. Went out of his way to say, hey, people, you don't have to kill off every American homeless. But, and you, the middle class guy, have been cordially invited to join the poor in poverty. Uh -huh. Maybe you believe me now. Uh, oh, because okay. you've been laid off. No, because no. I because I was fighting to preserve the lives of homeless people when middle class people didn't care. Well, maybe, maybe they, they still don't. If they well, can get a little of middle class, they, they're not. They don't want it. They'll just want to say, "Well, they're they're the less people, and let them uh, die." Right. You well, know. Well, I, well, I mean, I'm okay, Jack. Whether well, the middle attitude. class believes it mm. or they don't believe it. Yeah, and they got they're, their identity wrapped up in those roles that they yeah. play in order to get that money that gives them security. Yeah. and they've yeah. been bankrupted yeah. by their own institutions. Yeah, 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 yeah. By yeah. their own institutions. Co-opted. Co Opted as yeah. Well. yeah, so I'm not showing disrespect to working people. No, I respect no. them. They educated mm -hmm. me. Taxpayer educated me. I can tell you, you get some of that land that people are out there putting that thing together, cooperative like that, work like the devil. They can work like devil. Autodidactic people are the hardest learners in the world, rather than doing what some system tells you you have to do. Right. Don't you see? Yeah. Well, Freedom yeah. is better yeah. than uh, slavery, I think, inherently, in terms of the way the, the way the universe is set up. Yep. So they would work hard. Uh -huh. at building well, that place that they're going to put together. Well, it's through the pride of ownership uh, mm -hmm. with street news. We, we'd, hand yeah. some, so, we'd hand somebody their first, India would give them their first 15 free. And, and his predecessors did too. That was Mr. All Chan. The back to the, I'd like to thank Mr. Yeah, Chan yes, for having the, backed that up yes, for a long Yes, the great yeah. humanitarian Chan family. Yeah, it's too bad. Yes. That's not, there was some good writing in that movie. That was a yes. really good vehicle. It should be picked up again. Mr. Chan uh, mm -hmm. owns New York City newspapers. He owns Expedi... Uh, Expedi uh, uh, printing and mm. uh, puts out newspapers. He's the uh, reason why people in, uh, in New York had street news. Yeah, right. homeless, he he was and the one. Indio he, and you, you yeah, helped Indio. Well, yeah, well, congratulations. He took a like in Indio, and, and you know, so, but he liked everyone before Indio too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he liked street news. Yeah, 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 know? yeah. In the end, he gave it to Indio. You know, mm, yeah. But he's the one that pushed the button and printed those papers. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chan did. Yeah, I and, know. And and I did distribution and everything, and I and I and I, I saw pe I saw homeless people pick up a. A stack of papers and walk away. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and they owned it. They owned it. Yeah, right. So right. street news was a participatory model. It was very okay? good. Yeah, it should it be said, picked up again. Yeah. If you own something, you do better. Mm. Okay. The American shelter system is designed so that the homeless will never own the door handle on the door of the building mm. of a shelter. Mm. Our entire economic system is created so that the poor will own nothing. Yeah, they right. own nothing. I'm yeah. saying they can own a little bit of land, not mm. much, but it'll yeah. be theirs. And through the pride of ownership. Their mm. character will build. Okay. Their build. Their chances will grow, mm -hmm. and they will have hope and community. Mm -hmm. Things they don't have now. And some people who think they're all comfortable now may find that they're going to need something like as soon as they might think, because massive numbers of people are going to be put on the unemployment line. Your you middle class people, you're being replaced by machines, mm -hmm. but they're Japanese machines and they're Chinese machines. Yeah, but it's happening on a Take world a scale. It's happening on a world scale. Sure, and they got to have some alternate system of getting some of the buying power into the hands of the people. Where's all these forthcoming homeless people going to go? And there's a whole lot of them. It's Thirteen, according to Joe, mm. thirteen million. Joe who? Barton. Yeah. Yeah. Barton's thirteen a million guy. mortgages have been foreclosed. Yeah, there's fourteen million families are out on yeah. the street. Where are these people going to go? Yeah, Where and they're still go? going on. And they still got the system. Gonna, they're yeah. still reifying the system to put them out. One out of five homeless persons been run through the American military. Okay, 
the biggest contribution to the homeless population is foster care, aged out by Thank foster you. care. Thank you. We run out of time. Full, no no problem. The problem is, it, that's it, man. That's, uh, that's, that's, I can do another hour now. <laughs> that's Kenneth you know, Church. Give me another hour. Yeah, Come I on. can't get another hour. We're out of time. We're going to be 86 out of here. But well, thanks a lot. Best Indio, best everything. And we should pick up on this. And the book is, it's there, Homeland, homelesslandmodel.com. Homeless there it is. Long live the memory of street news. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's, and may it come back. I hope it comes back. In many forms. Maybe even television should come. Okay, thank you for your work.